Honestly, I was talking so fast, I'm not even sure if I covered the topic I wanted to cover. Let's find out together. Hi there. My name is Charles Ray Dawson. I'm the Associate Broker, Residential Sales Manager of ProStar Realty. This is the Unnamed Real Estate Podcast, Episode 155. One of these days, I'm going to see how fast I can say that because it's 155, all right? I've been doing this for a while. And some things change and some things never change. Some things are just eternal. So I um, hope everybody's having a good week and a good, you know, I, me and the wife were sitting there last night just going, my God, can this month suck anymore? Not necessarily from a real estate standpoint, but just, you know, she was uh, down sick for four days. I was recovering from the appendicitis, this, that, and the other thing. And just uh, suffering the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. But that's what life is all about. So personally, I've been listening to like, okay, for my bumper music or my outro music, right? That is uh, Cure of the Dawn. All right. And it's uh, from his song. Uh, it's the acoustic version, or at least the non word version of um, instrumental only, I guess you'd be call it, of his song Grateful to the Gods. And it's actually, he is. Um, reciting Marcus Aurelius's meditations and he's rearranged the words to make it almost, you know, lyrics does it. It's great motivational music. I'd, I'd actually say it's my war music now. And we've discussed war music in the past and how important it is to, you know, you have mental circuits in your brain that could be impacted by music. All right. Um, you also have mental circuits in your brain that could be in impacted by drugs and alcohol, right? Music is as addictive, but hopefully not as life destroying. So you need that little charge, you throw a song in, all right? So, you know, course of this, this week and this month, I, I found myself uh, listening over and over again to, um, uh, I want to call it Inviticus, Invitus. It's a poem and he put it to music and it's, you know, when I wake up in the morning and like I got the song in my head, it really jump starts you. So I'm, I'm going to include that in the show notes below. Give it a listen. Uh, if you like what you hear, I would definitely go purchase one of his songs from off of Spotify or iTunes. I actually have like the entire Marcus Aurelius album on my iTunes and I listen to it, you know, so little life hint right there. So, and what else we got? Over here at the office, we have decided we are going to roll out a brand new CRM. And what a CRM is, it's customer relationship management. That's where you get spam. All right. If you guys are getting uh, emails and texts from me that sort of sounds like me and they they're tend to be really vague. Hi, you know, hope you're having a wonderful year. Do you know anybody who's going to buy or sell a house this week? That's the computer. All right. Uh, I hated that. I can honestly say that my career is probably not as good as it could be because when I got going in this whole thing 13, 14 years ago, I refused to be that guy. Well, the problem is that guy gets all the listings and all the buyers because that guy actually stays top of mind, right? Yeah, I do sort of feel dirty. You know, sometimes I have to take a long shower realizing I'm turning into a true marketing whore, but unfortunately that's the nature of the game. All right. Um, it was in all you little baby agents out there, pay good note. One of the most painful lessons you're going to learn as a real estate agent is when that couple or that person that you spent two or three months with driving around, looking at houses, looking at kitchens, you know, discussing futures and plans and this and that and the other thing, you become a part of their life. 70% of clients state the two things all right they state that they would use their agent again but i can't remember their name wow and for an egomaniac like me that's that hurts that really hurts you don't remember me right we had a good three months together and you don't remember me what am i just like a freaking notch on your steering wheel some other real estate agent you decided to hang out with for three months and then just forget about that was special to me. Next question is, can I remember all of my clients? I might not be able to remember all of their names, but I remember all the experiences and I remember the houses. And if I run into one of my clients, I can usually sit there and have a conversation with them about, oh yeah, you remember that house that we had to search through trying to find a dead body? 
The reason why I bring that up is because some of my clients who keep in contact with me actually invited me to their wedding reception this weekend, which was super cool. Um, it was a little awkward trying to explain to people, you know, how do you know the happy couple? Oh, I'm their real estate agent. They just give you a look like, wow. No, and I did not pass out business cards like I should have because my hypocrisy only goes so far. And I really do not like to be one of those constant marketing whores. But, you know, will I sell a house for money? Yeah, I've been known to sell a house for money. Am I out there on the street with my hot pants going, hey, sugar, let me show, show you a good kitchen? No, nah, that's not going to be me. I'm... I'm more of a high class madam over here. That's that's my job right now. So in case you haven't noticed, I'm a little heavily caffeinated today. So let's talk about the news. Um, national news, things go on, things go on. Uh, more lawsuits are coming out. Everybody's coming up and, oh, we're going to sue this person because they did this. And, you know, it's still amazing how many people in the industry aren't paying attention to this. Okay, I, I'm just going to call them the dinosaurs. It's like, hey, what's that big thing falling from the sky? You know, that's the future. That's the sound of inevitability, Mr. Anderson. Um, but hey, you know, what What else do we have along those lines? People are so done with NAR, the National Association of Realtors. There is a org new organization starting uh, to try to directly compete with NAR. I don't know any news on this. I will keep an eye for on them. Are they going to be able to do what NAR does? It's That's big shoes to fill. And we're not just talking the lobbying thing, which is what NAR seems to want to concentrate on. But uh, the certifications, um, you know, I have an SRES, Senior Real Estate Specialist. Okay, that means that I have taken special classes and have a special understanding for dealing with seniors, who are downsizing, right sizing, smart sizing, um, to getting ready to move in an assisted living uh, facility. They have special needs and wants. All right, I'm trained and knowledgeable on how to deal with that. Another one that I just got was a accredited buyer's representative, which means I got a little bit more training on how buyers work and how to help my buyers out above and beyond just the normal day-to-day -day training. <clears throat> so is this organization going to come up with those accreditations? All right. More importantly, here in Arizona, is is the state of Arizona going to recognize their training as CE classes? That's important, right? I distinctly seem to remember, and I need to find this, that the Arizona requires real estate agents to take an ethics class independently of their CE classes. And I believe the only ethics class out there is that Arizona recognizes, that's important, that Arizona recognizes is the realtor ethics class. So we have to take every three years. So my question for you is, you know, how do you square that circle? All right. Are they going to be, are they going to be able to come up with an ethics class and then get it accredited by Arizona? So it meets the Arizona requirement, or are you going to have to wind up having to be able to go to an, that realtor ethics class not being a realtor all right uh honestly if there's any attorneys who watch this podcast who have any kind of understanding about sherman antitrust act and um that fancy little legal term when a, a non-government organization becomes an arm of the government because <clears throat> they are fulfilling government mandates with the government's permission. So what else is going on besides that? Let's, let's bring it down to Arizona. Yes, 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 yes. I'm going to show you the numbers. I'm going to show you the numbers. You know, we can't do anything about the numbers, but we got Cromford report conversation after the numbers. So let's look what we got going on on the numbers today. Okay. And here we are. These are the numbers for January 25th, 2024. Active this week are 15,493 up 146 from last week. Our new listings are 2,154, which is up 63 from last week. Contracts were 2,363 up 293. Our closings were at uh, 90, 952. Coming soon to an MLS near you is 743 new listings. Our supply uh, through the Crawford Report is our supply numbers are at 62.6, which is up 0.2 from last week. Our demand is up at uh, 73.1, which is up like 0.4. All right. So once again, because we have demand exceeding supply, 
and growing faster than supply, warning there, boys and girls. All right, we have a crown fairy report number of 116.8, which puts us into the seller's category, breaking it down into the individual neighborhoods and cities. All right, Chandler is leading the pack, up 9% over last month at 181.8. All right, and breaking it down through the cities, we get into the balanced market when we hit surprising Goodyear at 11 and 12 on that. All right. Uh, Paradise Valley is also considered balanced. Cave Creek is now considered balanced, all right? And then our buyer's markets, all right? Queen Creek, Buckeye, Boom, Maricopa. But as you notice, green lights across the board, all right? Big gainers month over month were Gilbert and Glendale at 23% each. Uh, our smallest growth area, I want to say, is Goodyear, all right? But still growing. It knows they've gone 6% month over month. They're right at 107 that's as close to a balanced market as you can get, all right? But once again, let's look at our low-end kind of stuff, all right? Uh, Cave Creek, barely into balance at 91.9, but Queen Creek, Buckeye, Maricopa, and I was literally saying today, you know, to somebody, you know, you want that house, you need to start talking Maricopa, and I hope you work from home because they still have one road out of that town, all right? One accident on that road means nobody's getting to work that day. So what else do we got going on? Um, this is... These are the kind of numbers that just I like to talk about, right? When you know is on the on this um, average price per square foot of active listings just hit a new all time high of three hundred and sixty six dollars and fifty four or forty three cents yesterday. This was written on January twenty first, right? This surpassed surpassed the previous peak set in May twenty twenty two and June twenty twenty three. All right. Active listings are moving in much larger numbers than last year when they were unusually scarce. The new listing arrival rate is back to normal, but the seller's expectations seem to be unusually positive judging by the asking prices. The average price per square foot has risen 2.1% in just the last two weeks. Two weeks, boys and girls. These figures are average across all areas and dwelling types. All right. And Day before that, they said a few cities have seen a sharp rise in their contract ratio over the past two weeks. The percentage increases for single-family detached homes are shown on the table below, and the top three of those is Apache Junction, Anthem, and Arizona City. Apache Junction, 64%. Okay, contract ratio jumped up to 94. Um, and then Gilbert, Sun Lakes, Chandler, Tempe, Peoria, Gold Canyon. And a couple have gone backwards on this one. Uh, Fountain Hills, Levine, Goodyear, Sun City West are actually dropping down. Phoenix is up 18% on that. Way. Remember that contract ratio. Um, back when we used to do the heat maps, contract ratio is how many houses are for sale, how many houses are under contract, all right? Looking back on our numbers that I like to use, this would be your contract ratio of contracts to active listings, all right? Now, remember... This contract number right here, that's just the new contracts for the month, right? So a more accurate contract ratio would be how many new listings came in, how many contracts. That would be how many new contracts. That's what contract ratio uh, looks at. I don't track contract ratio on this show because it is broken down into zip codes in very, very intense, very, very deep. And we only use that when we're talking a specific area. You're a buyer. You're working with me. We're out there. We're looking at this house. We like the house. You want to put an offer in on it. And those first questions is how low can we go? Let's go look at the contract ratio. All right. If I'm looking at it where the contract ratio is a three to one, you three have three active houses for every one under contract. Oh boy, are we going going to the bank on this one? We're 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 going to lowball these guys. All right. This is where we start writing it. And the cute dog we saw at the showing. We want the dog too. All right. Flip ratio on that, okay, is if you have a one, I mean, we were seeing one to tens, all right? For every active house, there were 10 under contract. Those contracts were closing in 45 days. That's how fast that is. That's that insanity level, all right? When I was showing you, I, I should have had, actually had one of these maps to show you. When I was showing you one of those old maps and every zip code was a different color, okay, and you had red for hot, you had magenta for oh my God, and then you just went to gray, Okay, gray, they was off the scale insane. All right, somebody joked one day and said, that's once the fire has burned through and there's nothing but ash, it's so hot. So, um, 
we're starting to move back in this. Just as we projected, interest rates are still doing this, but trending down. Okay, we're still much more on track to be looking at those fives that we were talking about uh, that we were expecting. All right, before they did the run up, um, those inflation rates that they came in started making people say, oh, maybe we aren't going to get the rate cut. All right, but now people are saying we're still expecting rate cuts. And that's where we're at. Um, if you are thinking about selling, where are you going to go? Okay, lock that into your head. Okay, if you're transferring for a job, call me. Okay, you definitely need to sell your house. All right. If you just think you need to upsize or downsize or you know, smart size your house because you're living. I had a lady that I talked to this week who went on for about five to 10 minutes how you could not, she could not possibly live in a two bedroom, two bath house. She wanted a specific builder. She didn't like the houses that she wanted. She didn't like the price point. She asked, do you have anything else with that builder? And I started looking around. I said, well, here's one, except they're two twos. And she's like, what's a two, two, two bedroom, two bath. And she goes off on who could possibly live in data, anything less than 3,600 square feet. And wh why do they call these swimming pools? They're, they're not even a wading pond. I don't know what they are. Da, 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 da. Well, in California, this would never work in my mind. I'm going, and then get thee hence to California. All right. And who could live in a tutu? This guy and his wife and the cat and the chickens. Okay. We do quite well in that. All right. So everybody has that different thing. Her main thing is that she wanted a big house. She liked having a big house. She liked having places for when the grandkids come, they all get their own room. God bless her. All right. And if she wanted one of those new houses, cause now she's in a two bed, she wants to get right size into a single story. Let's keep the square footage. All right. And we had a little come to Jesus of what that price point is nowadays. So that's sort of, you know, the selling process. I was like, hey, where are you going to go? This is a constant reoccurring thing. Um, if you're looking on being the buyer's side, all right, we have first time home buyer programs out there. Um, FHA and VA loans are still better rates than than the conventional loans with those you can get gift money you can also i hate them doing i hate, hate telling people to do this so i'll never tell you to do this all right but you can literally borrow against your 401k which i think is a really really dumb idea but they'll let you do it okay um asterisk ray thinks that's a dumb idea but i have to let you know that you can do a dumb thing and do this all right um however you want to, you know, want to play these things out. Um, and wow, it's, it's not like the prices are going down. Right. And the thing about escalators is if they're going to work, you got to step on them. All right. And your equity will not grow unless you have something to grow equity in. All right. So that's the end of this, uh, festival of talking. I am, Working this weekend or maybe not working this my birthday's on Sunday. And maybe I'll take Monday off. I don't know. Uh, it's real estate, baby. So you guys have a great weekend. No fancy segue into this. You guys have a great weekend, all right? Watch your children and pets around the water. Do not drive into anything flooded. I don't know if you guys saw those videos from what was going on in San Diego. But woof. Okay. Um, there was a couple, uh, couple streets, especially 12th Street, right south and northern. Always get some really good puddles. Missouri. All right, uh, about 21st Avenue, 23rd Avenue, before you get to the uh, Black Canyon Freeway out there, there's a couple really good puddles in there. Don't float your car. All right, so, but watch Children Pets Around the Water. I think I already covered that. Work your circles now more than ever. Okay, and you guys have a great weekend. See you guys next week.